Hello world, and we are back. My name's Kyle Fischel, and this is going to be episode 86 of my poker vlog. And for this episode, I took a trip to southeast Florida. We played at Seminole Coconut Creek Hard Rock. 2-5, no limit hold'em, $1,000 buy-in. I have a lot of hands to go over, so we're going to get right into it. First interesting hand. An extremely active player from early position raises to $25. I'm in middle position with pocket nines. I make the call. So we're going heads up to a flop of 643 rainbow. My opponent bets $35. Because my opponent bet over half the size of the pot, I don't really think he has too many strong holdings. I think the most likely hand he could have here is like ace king, where he's just trying to put a lot of pressure on hands that missed completely. And the fact that he's been very, very active, this guy has C-bet with probably close to 100% frequency. I give him very little credibility for having an actual hand here. So I raise as also I somehow have an over pair with nines, does not happen all too often. I raise to $105. My opponent makes the call and when the turn is the eight of diamonds, still somehow having an over pair, I'm definitely gonna go for some value and protection. I would like to fold out any Broadway over cards and additionally, I could still get value by hands like Ace-5 and Ace-Deuce, things like that. So I bet $210 on the turn, and the opponent calls pretty quickly. Now I actually think he has an overpair. I don't really see random two overs calling twice. When the river is an offsuit Deuce, I mean, one of the hands I was hoping he could possibly have is Ace-5, and is, that gets there also. It's not a great situation. When he checks to me, I definitely have the showdown value, just check it back. Like, I'm... Don't think I'm ever really getting an over pair to fold. And I don't think I'm ever getting called by worse. So I check it back and jacks are definitely better than nines. Kind of frustrating when the most active player at the table actually has a hand, but we'll just move on. Oh no, no, no. Next hand of note. I am under the gun with ace jack of spades. I raise to $25. Well, two later position players call and then the button calls as well. So we are going four ways to a flop of ace seven five rainbow. Because it's so dry and I have an ace and a backdoor spade draw, I think this hand functions fine as both a down bet as well as a check raise. The benefits of check raising here is it actually protects your checking range. If I'm willing to check raise with top paired good kicker, then in the future, it will disincentivize players to try to bluff against you when you check to them. As your checking range becomes much wider and has a lot more value in it, it's not just I check, I missed. Additionally, this specific board, there's not too much to be afraid of. The only real straights are six, eight and six, four, and not too many people should have called pre with that. So I check a uh, middle position player bets 40. There's one caller and when it's back to me, it's definitely time to launch the trap. We wanted to get some money in now and we want to raise big here because we're trying to get the stack to pot ratio at a level where we could easily get stacks in against any middling pocket pair that doesn't believe any worse ace as I don't think it's too likely someone would just call with ace king ace queen. A lot of three bets were happening at this table. So I raised to $210. The flop aggressor decides to call leaving himself only like $200 behind. So when the other player folds, there's very few times I think we're not getting stacks in on the turn. And when the turn is the queen of spades, I will happily get stacks in with this guy. Not only because I pick up a flush draw, but it reduces the combinations of ace queen my opponent could theoretically have. So I just put them all in. He calls pretty quickly. Not really surprised about that. River's a four. Not great because six eight specifically gets there. But my opponent has a flopped set of sevens. So Coconut Creek is not treating us well in the early goings of this session. We are in the hole for an entire 1K buy-in. You have no idea how not cool that shit is. But we are not going to give up. So next hand of note, and this one is a doozy. So a player who's playing out of the rack literally just decided to play his button before he's going to a different table. He bunched rails to $10. There's one limper, and then it's on to me. I have pocket aces of the black variety. I raised to $40. I think it's a pretty standard size. Don't want to go too big as I want to keep everyone in there with when I have my premiums and can play in relative position. Well, the button calls and the limper calls as well. So we're going three ways to a flop 
Not the greatest situation with aces, but the flop is queen 10, five, all clubs. It's actually a pretty good board for me. There's a lot of value to be had out there. Plenty of straight draws, plenty of one pair plus flush draws that can pay me off one or multiple bets. When it checks to me, I bet $50. I don't think I need to go too big here just yet. Nut flush blocker and a pair of aces. I feel pretty confident just going for straight value on this hand. The button calls still playing out of the rack. Kind of interesting. When the turn is the four of diamonds, definitely just gonna keep going with it. Ace high flush draw pair of aces sounds good for $135 wager. And my opponent decides to throw his entire rack into the middle, which is an all in. I don't know how much experience people have when people play out of the rack. From my personal experience and most of the viral clips online, let's say, the full rack shove is usually pretty weak. He says if my card comes, you fucked up. The card is coming. Let's see oh. if the jack comes. It doesn't. Feldman check. fills up on the river, on makes a check. <laughs> oh my gosh, and wow. he slides it in. What in the heck just happened? It's very rarely nutted, and it's very rarely even strong to begin with. I usually put, give a lot of credit to overbet shoves, but an overbet shove out of the rack seems weak, and if he somehow already has a flush, I guess I'll just take seven outs once, but I snap him off pretty quickly. All in. The river is a 10, pretty bad because that is a hand that would probably play the same way and pretty happily jam with a bunch of equity against most hands. But my opponent announces that he missed. He briefly shows me King Jack, Jack of Clubs. We get aces, it holds, strong hand, and we are back at Coconut Creek. At this point, I moved tables as I made a trip down here to play with Harrison, the star of Harry B. Poker. And so the next few hands are at a table with him. I am on the button with one limp to me. I looked down at pocket jacks. I raised to $20. No reason to go huge with it. Jacks on the button seems pretty good and pretty safe. I go for a typically smaller sizing here because it'll be easy to pot control and play in position and navigate based on different board textures. So the limper is the only caller, and on the 10 7 5 2 spade flop, very safe, no overcards, not too many rational two pair combinations out there besides exactly 7 5. And as there's plenty of straight draws that are possible on the flop, I bet $25. The turn is another 10. It's actually a pretty bad card for me, and I think my opponent has a single 10 a lot of the time when he just limp calls and then check calls flop. But in the moment, I actually thought that he was weighted to over cards, and this 10 was actually a good card to go for a second barrel. I bet again because I want to keep control of the betting lead. If he has a 10, I can name my own price, check back river, or bomb it if like a jack comes and I hope he has a 10. I bet $60. My opponent calls again pretty quickly. When the river is an ace, I mean, it's a pretty bad card obviously over to the jacks and he checks to me so against a very dangerous turn very dangerous river i can happily just check this one back and my opponent has ace queen off suit so called two streets with just two overs and binked an over card we are not running too well at coconut creek today you don't really think that you were going to get through this without being punished now did you next interesting hand in this hand a middle position player Harry B. Poker decides to raise to $20. I'm in the cutoff with pocket eights. Not really a three bet candidate, but a hand I will happily call and play in position with. So I call. We are heads up to a flop of Jack Six Seven Rainbow. Harrison bets $20. With only one overcard, I'm pretty happy to call here. I, Harrison's definitely a competent player and probably has a wide C betting range. So with backdoor straight draws and only one overcard, I think it's a pretty easy call. The turn is the most beautiful eight of spades I've ever seen. I have really been running good with pocket eights recently. And luckily for me, Harrison does not slow down. Harrison bets $75. I could raise now. I only have about $500 behind in my stack. And I think against any $200, $250 bet, I can get it all in on the river as when Harrison two barrels, I think he's pretty heavily weighted towards ace jack or an over pair. So I don't really see him slowing down too often. So I think I can continue to slow play my hand. So I make the call. The river is another jack. All right, we got a full boat. 
this hand run up happened the exact same way one time I was playing a live stream, ironically. But this time when Harrison throws in the third bullet, I think it's nearly guaranteed. He's got a jack or an overpair and with only about $250 left behind, definitely gonna go all in with it. So I look the dealer in the eye and say, Dan, for the 2-5. Table 7. Oh. Oh. Very, very unlucky cooler situation. Um, set over set should not happen all too often. And as I push my chips forward, uh, Harrison didn't hear that I was all in, but quite a gentleman. He, he pays off the bet. So definitely go subscribe to his channel. And there will be more of Harrison in Vegas later. I'm going to be fair. I'm going to be fair. Next hand of note. With one limp, a middle position player raises to $30. There's a late position caller before I'm in the small blind with ace king of clubs. Definitely gonna not just call this one. There's a lot of dead money out there and I should have the best hand most of the time. So I raise to $150. Only the pre-flop aggressor calls and the limper folds. So we're going heads up to a flop of nine, six, five, two clubs. Very good board for me. I still have all the overpairs in my range. I happen to have a flush draw. Definitely go for the down bet, bigger 60% bet on turn. We're gonna start this with a $100 wager on the flop. My opponent calls pretty quickly, so that's fine. We're planning on putting a lot of pressure on this turn, no matter what it is. When the queen of hearts peels off, I think that's pretty good for me for a bunch of reasons. One, if he had any kind of pocket pair, this is most likely an overcard to it. If he had like ace nine, nine, 10, he might fold to a bet here, which would be a great result. And if he had like Jack 10 suited, maybe club specifically, this card might even get him to pay off a second barrel with a hand that's actually doing pretty bad. So I bet $325 on this turn card. When my opponent calls, I think I definitely need to improve to be able to win this hand. I don't see my opponent folding all too often when he's already invested almost $600 in this hand. When the river's the four of hearts, not even close. It's a pretty disgusting blank, in my opinion. And if my opponent was going to call twice, I'm not sure he's going to fold this river. I have about $750 left in my stack at this point. And I think if I bet all three streets, it looks more like a missed flush draw because I think I would check call aces, kings, and ace, queen on this specific river card. The only hand I would bet three streets when the run out goes this way is pocket queens. So with a pretty wide bluffing range and a pretty narrow three streets of value range. I think I have to check this river card and my opponent checks it back and he has pocket jacks. I'm not running good against pocket jacks in this specific session. How do you call that turn? Next hand of note. I bunched out to $10. My opponent from the last hand raises to $40. I make the call with king queen off suit. I think it's fine to play this from the button. And the flop is ace, jack, four, two hearts. Flopping a gut shot. My opponent bets $40 on the flop. And this really should just be a fold. A gut shot's really not good enough to call this bet and this board. Especially against an opponent who's only showed down the goods against me and other opponents. In the moment, I made a very emotional, tilty call on the flop. First one's free. It's an emotional moment. I get it. And... When the turn is the queen of clubs, my opponent bets $150. In poker, bad decisions lead to more bad decisions. Now that I call with a gut shot and somehow picked up a pair, I do beat hands like king jack, and I think a king specifically would, would be live for me to win against, against some ace x hands. But either way, facing a $150 bet, this should also just be a fold. This hand should be a fold on the flop and the turn. But when my hand strength improve, I decide to make another relatively poor call. Have you ever done things that made you feel afraid of yourself afterward? The river is the deuce of spades, very brick card, and my opponent bets 230. Not even a big bet, and I think any ace X would play this way. I am beating missed heart draws, and I'm not holding any heart blockers, so that's kind of a good situation. We're not gonna compound mistakes anymore. Mistake on the flop, mistake on the turn. I think the fold on the river is the only good part of this hand at all. A final hand of note. With one limp, Harrison makes it $35. I have pocket jacks in the small blind. 
Not gonna three bet this one as I wanna control the size of the pot a little bit and Jack's out of position is much worse than Jack's in position. So I make the call. The limper calls as well. So we're going three ways to a flop of 10, nine deuce rainbow. I check the side to play and flow and the limper decides to lead into Harrison for $40. And Harrison just calls this bet and it's back to me. Well, having an over pair versus this kind of action, this lead I see a lot from just top pair. Things like ace 10, 10 jack, flop top pair, want to name your own price and get value for it. Harrison just calling. I don't think you can ever have better than pocket jacks when he just calls. So we think we have the best hand here all day. We're going to raise for value, hopefully to get stacks in. I only have an $800 uh, stack at this point. I raised to $275. Uh, the flop leader is all in for less. And we just show our jacks. No reason for us to not show. We think we have the best hand. We'll just table it. Well, when the runout is a seven of clubs and a five of hearts, my opponent just bucks their hand, so jacks are good. So first time at Seminole Coconut Creek in southeastern Florida. We are into the game for 2,700. Out of the game for 1,405. That is a loss of $1,295 across 10 hours equates to $129 an hour or 25 big blinds an hour in the wrong direction. If you watched the way to this point, thank you. I appreciate it. Please consider subscribing to my channel as it helps me out a great deal. The next few episodes will encompass my recent trip to Vegas. Have a Bellagio, Aria, and Golden Nugget episode that will be coming out soon. So stay tuned for that. And there'll be more to come next week.